A question I got from a subscriber called uh, Wanderer, and um, the subscriber was asking me if uh, hell is a literal place or or um, it's just a fiction or it's just some 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 thought or something. So today I want to speak about a hell, and I want to answer this question is hell literally a place of fire and brimstone is it a literal place or is it just some separation with god now uh we see the bible tells us a lot about hell and uh, by raining down fire and brimstone upon the cities of uh, sodom and gomorrah uh god not only demonstrated how he felt about the overt sin, but he also launched an enduring metaphor. Now, after the events of uh, Genesis 19.24 concerning uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, let's, let's just go there first to check. The Bible says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew the cities, and all the plain and the, the inhabitants of the city and uh, that which grew upon the ground and uh, things like that. And we understand the Bible tells us that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was an example of things to come. Now, this mere mention of fire and brimstone or Sodom or Gomorrah instantly transports any reader into the context of God's judgment. And... Uh, such an emotionally potent symbol, however, has trouble escaping its own gravity. And uh, this fierce image can impede, rather uh, advance its purpose. And the symbol should show a similarity between two dissimilar entities, fire and brimstone, which the Bible describes some of what hell is like but you have to understand that is not all of what hell is are you getting my point now the word um, the word uh, that the bible uses to describe uh, hell is the word jehenna okay jehenna this comes from an actual burning place which is also called uh, uh, the valley of jehenna if you have heard that in israel which is adjacent to Jerusalem on the south. Now, Jehina is an English transliteration uh, of the Greek form of an Aramaic word, which is derived from the Hebrew phrase, uh, phrase, the valley or the son of Hinnom, if you have ever heard about that. Now, in one of their greatest apostasies, the Jews, especially under the king Ahaz and Manasseh, they pass their children through the fires in uh, to try and sacrifice to a certain god and this was the god molech okay in that valley the valley of jehina the one i've just told you about and this one you can read in the book of uh, second kings let me just show you this in uh, second kings uh 16 verses 3 this to show how jehina or hell was seen to be an evil place okay but he walked in the way of the kings of israel here yeah, and made his son pass through the fire according to the abomination of the heathens whom the lord cast out from the uh, from before the children of israel and he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and the on the hills under every green tree and things like that so you see this was a place whereby people used to sacrifice and uh, and pass children through f the fire in a in a celebration of this god uh, which who was called the god uh, molech okay you can also read in second chronicles 33 verse 6 and jeremiah 32 uh, to 35 uh, 32 verse 35 now eventually we have to understand that the Jews considered that location, that Jehenna, this valley, okay? They considered it uh, a defiled place, okay? It was a defiled or ritually unclean place, as the Bible says in 2 Kings 23 verse 10. And they defiled this place so much, 
all the more casting the bodies of criminals into this uh, smoldering uh, place and uh, they, they made heaps of people who are uh, uh, criminals and it, it was a place which was considered a, an unclean place, a dirty place, a place for, you know, torment and for anyone or things which are evil. Do, 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 you, do you get my point? Now, in Jesus' time, this was a place of constant fire. The fire was not going off because there was always evil people and evil things being thrown into that fire. But more so, it was a refuse heap. And uh, the last stop for all items which are judged by men to be worthless. Now, when Jesus spoke of Gehenna hell, he was speaking of the city dump of all eternity. Of course, fire was part of it, but the purposeful uh, thing for this Gehenna was casting away all the separation and loss. That was the main aim of this place, this Gehenna. Okay? Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Mark uh, 9 verse 43, it tells us that uh, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Now, Jesus uses an, this powerful image to illustrate the seriousness of hell. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter in a, a life maimed than with two hands and you go to hell where the fire never goes out. Now, for most readers, it is this image, this, this kind of image where, where God is telling you, cut off your hand and, and you ask yourself, if I have to cut off my hand, how bad can that place be that I have to cut my own hand? Are, are, you, are you seeing the point? Now, for most readers, this image does not escape his own gravity. And in spite of the goriness, few believe that Jesus wants us to literally cut off our own hand. He would rather that we do whatever is necessary to avoid going to hell. That is the purpose of such language that Jesus used this kind of language to show us how bad that hell is. Okay? It was to polarize and to set up an either or dynamic or just basically to compare that place with how bad it can be that someone has to cut his own hand to avoid it. Since the first place of the passage uses imagery, the second pass also and therefore should not be understood as, a, as an encyclopedic description of hell. Okay, now, in addition to fire, we, have, we know that in hell there is fire. In addition to fire, the New Testament describes hell as a bottomless pit or an abyss, somewhere where there is, you know, it's, it's not ending, it's like a bottomless thing. Let me read to, uh, to you in the book of Revelation uh, 20 verses uh, 3. It calls it the bottomless pit and cast him into the bottomless pit. This is casting Satan into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set up a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So the Bible kind of describes hell as also bottomless pit. Okay, bottomless pit, a place where you can't find the end. And also it describes hell is a is a, a lake is a lake of fire a lake are you seeing this point it's also a lake because the bible tells us about this in uh, the book of revelation uh 2014 20, 20 verse 14 it tells us it's a lake so i want to show you all descriptions of hell so that you can know is it really a literal place or is it just separation and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death. So, hell itself will be cast into the lake of fire. And I've explained this before. You can check uh, another video where I've explained about that. Hell cast into the lake of fire. So, it shows hell will also be in the lake. Okay? It will be in the lake. And also, the Bible tends to say that hell is also a place of darkness. Darkness. Matthew 25.30 Matthew 25, verses 30. 
Matthew 25, 30, it says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. Are you seeing? So hell is a place of darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Darkness. Huh. Darkness. You have to ask yourself, is that place literal or is it just separation? And also the Bible tells us that in hell there is death. Death. Death in hell. Okay. And this is uh, explained in Revelation chapter 2 verse 11. There is death. These are all attributes of hell. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has uh, said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Death. So in hell there is death. Mm. And also, we see apart from death, there is destruction. There is death, destruction. We have read there is a, it's a lake. There is darkness. Bottomless pit. And also the Bible tells us there is destruction in hell. Okay? In 2 Thessalonians 1.9. 2 Thessalonians 1.9. The Bible tells us that there is that destruction. Who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Destruction. So in hell there is destruction. Hmm. And also apart from that, there is everlasting torment. There is a lot of torment in hell. So those are also other attributes of hell. There is torment. Torment. Revelation 2010. Uh, Revelation 20 verse 10. It tells about torments in hell. He says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So there is torment in hell. Torment. Hmm. And also the Bible tells us that in hell there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. Wailing and gnashing of teeth. So people will be wailing there in hell making noises and gnashing their teeth in Matthew 25 verse 30 let's see Matthew 25 verse 30 it tells us about this and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth you see the things which will be happening in hell weeping and gnashing of teeth and also, you have to understand that hell is also a place for eternal punishment. People will be punished for what they did against God. Punishment will be there in hell. And uh, concerning punishment, there are so many verses talking about this. I'll just read uh, maybe uh, one or two, and uh, i leave the rest to read for yourself. In Matthew 11, verses uh, 20. Okay, we can read to 24. It talks about punishment. Then began he to upbraid the cities where, wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woo unto thee, Chorazin. Woo unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. You see? If, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have been remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So, there is punishment which will be happening in that hell. People will be punished for what they did. See, because the Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah were punished for their evil deeds. So it means that will also be a place of punishment. And also you can read in the book of Luke 47 to uh, 48 concerning the same. And also you can read Revelation 20 uh, verse 12 to 13. It all speaks about what? 
that there'll be punishment, punishment in hell. Now, we have to understand that the, 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 the very variety of hell's descriptors, they argue against applying a literal interpretation of any particular one. For instance, hell's literal fire could emit no light, okay? Since hell would be literally dark. We have read about that hell would be dark. So we understand it could emit no light because it, it will be dark. It is the the fire, it's 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 fire, the, this 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 fire of hell could not consume its literal fuel or the persons, since their torment is non ending. You understand the Bible says that torment in hell will not be ending. So even if you're burning and burning and burning, you're not getting finished. It's like you're burning and you're it's like you're dying, but you're not dying, it's like you're dying and you're not dying. That's that's the kind of understanding of this okay and additionally the gradation of punishments within hell also confounds literalness does hellfire burn hitler more fiercely than a honest uh, a pagan does he fall more rapidly in the abyss than another have you ever asked this yourself these questions is it darker for hitler <laughs> does the wall does the wail and gnash, is it, is it more loud and more continually than the other? The variety and symbol nature of descriptors does not lessen hell. However, you have to understand that the opposite, in fact, it's that this place is torment, literal, and all these things which have been described, they have to happen. Okay? Now, the combined effect describes hell. That is worse than death. Okay? Hell is worse than death. And is also darker than darkness. And deeper than any, any kind of abyss. Hell is a place with more wailing. And gnashing of teeth than uh, than any single way that any person in the Bible has described it to be okay it is a symbolic description explaining a place beyond the limits of our language a place far worse than we could ever imagine that is hell so for those who say that hell is just separation from God, I really ask you to go deeper into your Bible and read it and ask yourself all these things that you have been told about hell, that it were better for you to cut off your hand or pluck out your eye than go to hell. Ask yourself, is it just separation? It is a bottomless pit, the lake of fire, this darkness, Death, destruction, torments, wailing, punishments. My friends, all you need to do is believe the gospel. You just need to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news about what Jesus did for us. What is that good news? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that the good news is Christ died for our sins. He didn't die for nothing, for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So why did he die? He died for our sins. That's the most important thing. And the next important thing is to understand how Jesus died. So how did Jesus die? Christ died by shedding of his blood. Every single drop of his blood was shed. Why? Because the Bible says without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. If Jesus could have died of strangling or drowning in water or electrocution could there be salvation i don't think so because the bible says without shedding of blood there's no forgiveness of sins so why is the blood important the blood is important because of one thing the bible says in leviticus 17 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your sins. For it is the blood that atones for the sin. 
So you can only atone for your sin through the blood. And that's why Jesus had to shed his blood for you to be forgiven, for your atonement to be achieved. But it's not just any blood because we are sinners. And the Bible says the wages of sins is death. If you're a sinner, you have to die. But the only person who can atone for your sin is someone who is not guilty. You're guilty, so you cannot save another guilty person. It had to be someone who is guiltless to save a guilty person. So Jesus, this is where he comes in. While we were still sinners, 2,000 years ago, Christ died for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he died for your sins? If you do, my friends, all you need to do is confess to Christ what you believed. You cannot confess what you don't know. That's why you can't go to a court of law and say, I saw that thief and you didn't see the thief. Because that's a crime. That's a lie. If you, if you say and you pray and you say, Oh, Jesus, forgive me my sins and you have not understood the gospel, then you're a liar. You first have to understand what Jesus did for you. Then you confess to him what you have understood. That is what we call salvation. You, all you need to do is tell Jesus, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. I understand and I accept that payment, that atonement that you gave for me by faith. And once you do that, my friends, you are saved, sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like and also you can share to your friends. Let them be able also to hear the same message and also you can subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new video which we post every day and also in the description we have some other channels on BitChute and facebook instagram and other places where we also post the word of god just go and uh, also share to your friends so that they can also be able to see and hear god bless you and have a great time